Hello, everybody. Welcome to the awesome chat. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the uh, Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, with an awesome, awesome guest today. We're going to talk about video games. We're going to talk about Indiegogo. A few days uh, left to participate in uh, that uh, for yourself. Uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but first, please go check out subscribe awesomecast.net. Um, all of our new, all of our links for iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, and just a heads up, if you guys are noticing any weird stuff going on with the feed, especially on the iTunes and the uh, Stitcher, uh, we are moving to a new host, so please be wary of that. Let us know if you're having any issues so we don't have any crop up that we're not aware of. Uh, but awesome chat, awesome cast, both on the move, both to um, greener pastures, I guess you could say. So please let us know there. And of course, let us know uh, you know what you think of our interviews and check out the main show, awesomecast.net, at awesomecast on the Twitter, awesomecast on the Facebook. And uh, live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Live.awesomecast.net for the live stream for the main show. So let's get into our interview today. I love when there's a cross-section of my two main shows here between technology and pro wrestling. And this is one of those cases. With me today is Mike Quackenbush. He is the man behind uh, Chikara Pro, which I am a super fan of. Just actually visited out there for King of Trios here um, back in September. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Of course, we're going to be talking about your uh, video game that you're, you have going on on Indiegogo. But for the uninitiated, for the tech audience, the awesome cast listeners out there, can you explain uh, what Chikara Pro is and why it's a little different than most uh, pro wrestling organizations? Well, Chikara is probably more akin to a comic book come to life than it is an attempt to replicate within professional wrestling what UFC is. Um, I think there's a lot of wrestling out there that's meant to try and replicate mixed martial arts to the very best of their ability. And we're kind of at the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, our characters are a whole lot like superheroes. You're far more likely to see... A storyline that involves time travel, for example, at Chikara. So we're kind of down there at the uh, sci-fi superhero end of the spectrum. Uh, and our particular flavor of wrestling, I think, is probably best analogized with a comic book come to life. It speaks to our serialized storytelling. It speaks to the kind of colorful, vibrant characters that we have. And that's also what sets us apart from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And definitely, you know, a family friendly, like a, a very explicitly family friendly kind of uh, 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 vibe with you guys. Yeah, we work very hard to create something that never insults anyone's intelligence. But likewise, something that I always reiterate to my entire cast and crew is that I would never want a kid to be embarrassed to be sitting next to their grandmother watching the content of our show. And likewise, I would never want any parent there with a young one to feel embarrassed for what they're seeing put on our stage either. So we have to do our very best to make it as acceptable as we can to all. And granted, that's a real challenge in an age of trigger words and safe spaces. How do you make professional wrestling in an era where that's such a concern? But that's what we're striving to do. We really do believe that the art form could be enjoyed by way more people than currently right now identify as wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the game. Now we've kind of set the stage for that. Tell us uh, what you guys are doing these days on uh, Indiegogo. Well, we've got a crowdfunding campaign going on over at Indiegogo to help finance quicker production for our video game, Chikara Action Arcade Wrestling. We've teamed up with the developers who have already in the past created two iterations of the Action Arcade Wrestling video game franchise. Uh, this third one will be uh, involving us quite directly. It's our characters. It's some of our proprietary ideas and some Chikara hallmarks, like a trios match or being able to set the match inside our home base, the Wrestle Factory. Right now, this game is scheduled to come out first or second quarter of 2018, which to us feels like an eternity. However, we're able to hire additional help on the animation front, on the development front, if we can hit our goal and possibly bring this thing out anywhere from 9 to 12 months faster. So that's what we're attempting to finance on Indiegogo. So really the goal is to make this a reality in, say, 2017. That's right, because currently we're looking at, like, absolutely it could not come out any sooner than March 2018, based on the fact that... It's a skeleton crew of people. They're working on it in their spare time. They're not full-time game developers. It's a passion project for them. But if we were able to buy 
time for them to work 40 hours a week, for example, on this, where they, you know, or bring on additional help really is what a lot of it comes down to hiring uh, two additional animators to assist. It would accelerate the release of the game dramatically. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of that, that, that same role that I always hear in, in our production or our projects. You have, you have money, time and quality and, and definitely the money helps slide the time bar down, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, so, uh, so far as, as of this record, recording this on Tuesday, November 1st, uh, so you guys are at about forty-four uh, percent of the twenty-five thousand dollar goal. Fifteen days left. So again, this is not a make it or break it kind of thing, like with most Kickstarters. Indiegogo allows for this kind of uh, different levels of 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 accomplishing your goals. Here, you're saying this is a game that is going to make it. It's going to happen. We're just working on speed of it. Uh, where are you at right now? Like, what does uh, the forty-four uh, percent uh, kind of do to that outlook for you guys so far? Certainly, this is a massive help. Even with two weeks to go, uh, you know, internally, we've had a lot of discussions about how are we managing this campaign and what are we going to do to be able to get this thing over the finish line, you know, that $25,000 goal that we're looking for, given that we do have half a month in which to do it. Uh, one of the things that we're doing, for example, this Saturday from our home base, the Wrestle Factory, we're going to go right live on our Facebook page and do a half hour Q&A with the lead developer and the creator of Action Arcade Wrestling, Dave Horn. We're finally going to be able to, for the first time, talk openly about some of the consoles where this is going to be delivered, some of the platforms. That's been a big question. We just want to give people more information, at least at, to the best of our ability, because we think once they know a little bit more about this project, they're going to be just as excited as we are. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, and this has been a long road for you. I mean, I think, you know, we were just talking about the uh, one of the first times I came up to see King of Trios all those years ago. Like, there's been talks, there's been trailers, there's been kind of, I think, attempts at video games uh, mm-hmm. over the years. And so this has been, this has been a long road to get to the point where, like, like there is something to show here and something that's really going to happen. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, was it kind of a development hell that I always hear about in, in video game production? Well, uh, our previous video game effort, which was called Rudo Resurrection, was being done by a group of people that had previously worked, I believe, for 38 studios up in New England. And uh, they underwent a tremendous amount of turbulence, which really interrupted the process of creating Rudo Resurrection. We had a trailer out for it, and we had attempted on Kickstarter to raise money. Um, A bunch of the developers had left 38 studios and said, if you could pay us a full-time wage for 60 days... We think that we could get this game done, but our Kickstarter never hit the goal. And that's one of the main differences, of course, between Kickstarter and Indiegogo. You don't hit the goal, you get nothing. Mm -hmm. All that money goes back to the people who had pledged it. And so ultimately, even though we had designed what I thought would have been a super fun kind of side-scrolling beat-em-up, very much in the style of that double cabinet X-Men arcade game from the 90s, um, it just never came to fruition. I really wish, even seeing some of the basic level stuff and um, having fun with the boss fights at the end, if, if the audience had been able to see what that stuff looked like, maybe that would have made enough of a difference. We tried to mount that a second time, and again, the campaign failed. But this is a completely new project, and what's really different here, as you pointed out, is this will come out. We might have to wait a good long while for it to come out, but that's exactly why we've taken to Indiegogo, and while We've got the entire Chikara cast and crew out there really stumping for this thing to get eyeballs on our Indiegogo campaign. This is very much meant to be an answer to what a lot of us feel, those of us that play wrestling video games all the time. We always talk about the games that we love as if it's all in the past tense. We talk about going to the arcade to play WrestleFest, or I talk about, I used to get import versions of Fire Pro Wrestling by Human in Japan. I'd have to uh, print out translations of the instruction guide so I knew how to play it. Uh, I remember getting my systems chipped up so that a Japanese game could be played on my Sega Saturn. And we talk about these things with such a passion and such a fervor. And we wonder, why is that gone from the discussion about wrestling games in 2016? Is it because they're more simulation heavy and they're less about the action? And so we wanted to create something that was really an answer for that and a callback to the games that we loved. That's awesome. And you say, aside from you know the obvious uh, uh, side of... of- you know, the way Indiegogo works as opposed to Kickstarter for selecting that. Uh, you had a couple attempts at it. You, you you definitely had to have learned something from those first couple go go. I'm sorry, uh, Kickstarter campaigns. Um, you guys always have a really good presence on social media in general. What did you learn from those first couple runs at, at, a, at a Kickstarter? 
Well, I do think that the goals were a little too ambitious. Uh, the mm-hmm. second time around, in fact, the uh, development studio hired a, hired a marketing expert whose main claim to fame was that she had successfully managed over 20 crowdfunding campaigns. And she said, this is the price point that we need to bring this thing at. And we pushed hard against it. We said, we don't think that's a realistic fundraising goal. We think that you're asking too much of our audience and that we don't think we're going to hit it. But they were adamant about it. And then, and then when, when the Kickstarter failed, we couldn't help but feel a little bit like, you know, we told you so. We have a really good sense of who our audience is, about how many people out there are really passionate about this, and, and that goal was too lofty. Well, this time, we're more firmly in control at the, at the steering wheel, and I think that's going to make all the difference. We're really aware of how important the last 10 days are in a campaign like this, and that's why we're really loading up. We've got to bring the fireworks factory in the last 10 days to get people excited and get them on board, because as you noted, as of today, with 15 days to go, we haven't even crossed the 50% mark. Right now, we're, we're at 44%. That's great. So tell the people, uh, what, are you get, what are you doing to get people excited? Uh, what are the kind of levels that people can participate in right now? And, and is there anything coming up that in that next week? This is going to uh, come out on Thursday, of course, on the 3rd of uh, November. Like, What can people kind of look at uh, as of that release date? Mm-hmm. So we've got a whole bunch of different incentive reward levels that you can check out right on our Indiegogo page, uh, including getting some rare collectibles. Of course, we want to uh, make sure you get a, a digital copy of the game. Uh, some several free months uh, of our proprietary subscription service that's like Netflix. It's called Chikaratopia. It'll give you access to over 700 hours from our vast video vault. So we've got all these goodies and with these bells and whistles built into it, etc., But one of the things that's coming up immediately will be Saturday, November 5th, on our Facebook page. We'll be live with a QA and a with Dave Horn, uh, the main guy behind Chikara Action Arcade Wrestling. That's going to be the first day that we can actually talk about which platforms the game will be on. We're going to be talking about the first wave of playable characters that we're going to be releasing. We're going to be talking a little bit about what you can expect in our Create a Wrestler edit mode, which is called the Wrestle Factory, appropriately enough. How you're going to be able to go in and build some of your favorite characters. To me, that that was always one of the most fun aspects, especially of the Fire Pro series. I probably spent twice the amount of time in edit mode building out my crazy rosters that I ever did actually playing matches. And I want everybody else to have that same kind of fun. I want them to enjoy the games the way that I did. And I know everybody involved in this project feels the same. That's awesome. Um so uh, it, well, that was, you brought up uh, uh, Facebook Live, and, and if I can kind of an aside uh, uh, extra topic for this a little bit, uh, we've been talking a lot about what you guys have been doing with Facebook Live. Um, I, I know you guys have been doing some of your some of your matches online with that from your shows and everything. Uh, I know with some of the promotions I work with here in the Pittsburgh area, we're experimenting with that as well and other projects uh, for other clients. Uh, can you speak a little bit to uh, what you're seeing so far, what those experiments with uh, uh, Facebook Live so far? Sure. I have, months ago, we became aware of the fact that every video we were putting on Facebook immediately had greater social media traction and stickiness than what we were doing on YouTube, which I think we all think of as the dominant video platform. But that's just, it's completely shifted. It's completely changed. And Facebook Live, we put an entire event of ours on Facebook Live called The Black Goodbye. We did it about two weeks after King of Trios. And we just sort of did it as an experiment. What kind of audience could we attract? Using this platform, we threw it out there with no advance promotion. Surprise, here it was. And when the broadcast was over, we'd had 15,000 people watch this broadcast. So the numbers to us were staggering. It's a matter of, you know, how do you use it judiciously? We have to be very careful. A small company like ours, we have to be very, very careful about each piece of content that we're trying to monetize. We, we can't afford to give it all away. We, we can't afford to be, for example, if you look at the WWE Network uh, as somebody else who's in the space of having kind of like a subscription model VOD service, they can give away their crown jewel, WrestleMania, which we all used to pay fifty nine ninety five to watch. Well, now you, could, you can watch it for nine bucks, or if you play your free month right, you can watch it for nothing at all on that network. But a billion-dollar multinational conglomerate like the WWE can take chances that a very small – you know, independent boutique operation like Chikara can't. However, we do have to make efforts to try and appear competitive in that space because ultimately we're fighting for the attention of roughly that same fan base. We we want their eyeballs on us. So something like throwing an event on Facebook Live or finding other ways to leverage that for people's attention, 
That's those are necessary risks we have to take. And with Facebook Live thus far, it's been paying off. And you guys are, are you're probably the the earliest indie that I remember back when we were all starting podcasts like ten years ago. You have podcast a go go, which is still going strong. Um, you know, you, you guys were always on top of that that kind of cutting edge of what's next to get that message out there. Yeah, we have a video wrestling podcast that ever existed. Uh, that was fresh on my mind because we're coming up on our 500th episode. Um, so, yeah, we, sometimes you know we jump out there in front of some of these new trends and they work, and other times they don't. We we were really convinced of the long time viability of Periscope when it launched. Periscope's numbers; those first 90 days were crazy. The way people were jumping on that platform, and it certainly peaked. And then we just kind of watched them drop off precipitously. So. You know, for every podcast to go go, which has had tremendous staying power and has been a massive vehicle for people discovering us, it's free content we give out every single Monday. For every story like that, we've also got one where, you know, like toward the end, our experiments on Periscope were sometimes only seen by dozens of people. That's awesome. Well, uh, and, and of course, you know, making new ground these days with Indiegogo, uh, I have put in my 25 bucks for it. Uh, so there is my. Uh, 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 recommendation there for anybody uh, out there. If you're a fan of video games, you're a fan of wrestling video games, uh, or anything in general, or you just, just want to toss a buck in to see how this goes, uh, please go check it out, Indiegogo. Um, and is there a short URL for that, or they just look up Chikara on Indiegogo, correct? You could just look up Chikara Action Arcade Wrestling, or you're going to see it right on the front of our website right now, mm. ChikaraPro.com. You'll see Action Arcade Wrestling splashed right up there. Awesome. Go check it out. This looks fun. This looks so much fun. And and yeah, I miss those days of just sitting around those those games. I mean, I know uh, uh you know, even at at your latest show, it was uh we there was a No Mercy tournament. You know, everybody getting on getting together and all the creative characters. I could tell somebody was really deep into that um mm-hmm. that uh that that it was put together. So, thank you so much for joining us. Go check them out. Check out everything at chikarapro.com. Maybe even if you're not a wrestling fan, uh I think you might be into it. Go check it out. Maybe you'll find a, a, a new a new interest online. And check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to this. Check out all our interviews with all the startups, uh, video game people, all kinds of fun stuff, bloggers, podcasters that we've been doing over a year and a half for this interview series. Um, all right there at awesomecast.net. Subscribe in all the places. Linked right there. Thank you so much to my awesome guest, Matt Qu- Mike Quackenbush. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.